like basically in human capital management, the basic steps we do need to follow is to hire and rehire process. In okay, basically in any company, like we do have a job posting if there is a requirement. Like basically they go for an internal job posting or like they go for a hiring and pressure or a lateral entry. Basically those steps kind of steps like the process which they follow is request for a source. What do what kind of source it is by posting it in a newspaper or in a websites or from webs like portals like Naukri, Times Job, etc. Like and they have shortlist the candidates by going on through the interview process and they hire a candidate. And later on they enter the employee information into the system. And those data informations about the employee is basically stored into the, the system, which can be stored in Excel. But nowadays like the technology has improved so into a level. Like in Oracle Fusion, the main advantages of Oracle Fusion Fusion HCM stays on that. Like the what are the major difference when we compare to the Oracle R12 and Oracle Fusion HCM is that like in Oracle R12 do we do need a database, a database administrator and then license to get all these like and pay for the DBA. The main advantages is like in Fusion is you can store your database in the cloud and and we do not need a DBA to Serve that, serve that, and all those kinds of stuff. We do not require a license, like mm, get a license, store it in our premise, do kind of uh, hire and DBA, do kind of services for that. The ba the main advantages, like the Oracle Fusion HCM, comes under four types: on premise, cloud, and basically the most important one is cloud, because we do not require a DBA for it and we go for this Oracle Fusion, Oracle Fusion, not in the HCM. Mm. Like basically Oracle Cloud Services has two ports, SaaS and PaaS, software as a service and platform as a service. Oracle Fusion HCM comes under the software as a service product. Okay, moving on to the HR part, the basic requirement is like to enter, if I'm hiring an employee, what is his hire date, like what kind of assignment he is in, what is his manager and what is his payrolls and their compensation can be stored in a particular ERP and that's where the Oracle Fusion stays in. Okay, let's move on to what kind, what is the process we do require to, we do require in the hire to rehire process. Okay, when we hire an employee, we give him a person ID that is nothing but the person number and give him the compensation and the payroll benefits like assign him the payroll based on his abilities and go for induction and training programs to the specific individual and deploy him in some kind of project after the training and give him the assignment whether he is active like active assignments in which business units like basically in Oracle Fusion HCM goes on this way like if it is a division what kind of division if the company has two divisions one is put up in US and other is in India like the standard procedure goes on with division legal entity legal employer business unit job grades and so on the legal employers is nothing but the combination of payroll statutory units and the legal Legal entity, sorry, legal entity is the combination of payroll, statutory units and the legal employer. Legal employer is nothing but the company put up. Okay, then moving on to the flow, like workforce deployment. What do we do in the workforce deployment? Is induction starts with its induction and training, deploy an assignment to a specific candidate and manage his goals and what kind of trainings do we need to employ him? kind of on the job training or more onto the training and put him as a shadow resource under an equipped or trained employer. 
and manages kinds of transfers and relocations, manages promotions and manages tax and liability where the main payroll statutory units play the major role in that. And like right from the hire to the resignation, how do they hire them? How do they give all these kinds of employment information? How do they create and work relationship to the specific business unit and all those kinds of stuffs. Okay, let me go on to the documents. In this I am going to navigate how to hire an employee in the front end. Uh, mm, hire, terminate an employee, rehire an employee and steps involved in the global transfer process. Okay, the first step in hiring an employee is like, go to the navigator, click on my workforce, then new person. New person. There you can see an option under task. This hire an employee, add a contingent worker, add a non-worker, add a pending worker. Basically, the person types can be distinguished as an employee, contractor and then non-worker. Employee is a kind of a full-time employee and contractor it's like based on the contracts like a person will be not under the specific payroll or maybe from a third party payroll we hire them and work on the basic contracts. Non-worker it's like we create a work relationship to the specific business unit but he is nowhere related to the business unit or no payroll it's created using a third party or using the normal payroll systems. Like you can see an option here, hire an employee. Okay, click on that button, hire an employee. The next step is hmm, the, the highlighted ones for the mandatory columns. Basically, while hiring an employee, there are some mandatory options in the Oracle Fusion HCM which cannot be skipped. And, the, and those option or attributes are hire date. Basically for an employee the hire date is the most important one because the date of joining it's like all his kind of compensation and benefits are right from the hire date. So the hire date, hire actions, there can be a kind of list of values provided for the hire actions. Like hire, maybe kind of a contractual hire or something like that. Hello Arvind. is the legal employer. Legal employer is nothing but the company. Like basically any enterprise they put up, they will have uh, more than one legal employer established. Say for like in different locations. If a company has put up in India, they will have branches at Hyderabad, Bangalore, Chennai and Gurgaon and etc. etc. So such kind is called as a legal employer. Or maybe you can say that as a business unit or legal employer. If say a computer, a company has an, it's put up an IT industry. Let's say for Reliance industry, it's been in IT industries like share, share markets and retail industry. So we do differentiate them as the legal employer. Hmm. Like for this, for hiring an employee, this is also a mandatory one. In which legal employer do you are gonna hire a person? and the person number it's generated automatically. This person number generation can be put assisted by us during the it's a one time setup. So like in this instance this one time setup has been through an automatical mode. So the person number will be hired through then automatically. What is his name? We do need to enter this personal details like first name, last name, title, and these are the mandatory columns for for the identification tabs for hiring an employee. Okay, the na national identifier. National identifier is nothing but like a passport kind of number, most frequently used in, in United States. Okay, the next process is entering the personal information. Personal information of one person, it's like the address, in which country do he stay, city, state, zip code, county, 
kind of information has to be added for hiring a new person. And next goes on with the employment information. This is the most vital part in hiring an employee. Like in which in which business unit do he really work? As I told you, like if we considered Reliance as an enterprise, there can be kind of a retail market, share markets, IT industries. So in which kind of business unit he is really equipped? If in kind of a retail industry, in which location he is there? Okay. If in kind of a retail industry, in which location do he Hyderabad or Bangalore? And it's assignment status. He should if while basically while hiring an employee, there will be kind of active active payroll eligible or active no payroll eligible. This active non payroll eligible will be applicable to a non worker who is nowhere related to the company but he is a part of an kind of a maybe a kind of a trainee who is employed in in case of the training. And some other fields are like position and job. What kind of job? Mm, maybe a fresher, if a fresher is joining to a company, he'll be given as a business associate, senior consul associate consultant. Maybe the grade ladder it goes on. So we do need to assign the job. And like mainly this mandatory columns are seeded ones. Even using the page composer, we can make some fields as mandatory. Okay, the next step in this process is entering the manager details. Basically the most important vital one put in for hiring a person is its manager. Who is in what who is his manager? All those details are entered under the manager details and goes on with the probation and the notice period. Basically when an employee is hired, we do that be a kind of a probation period, like which can be kind of six months or maybe one year based on his performance. So we do enter the probation details, start date and the end date. If it's gonna be then what kind of notice? Start date, end date and the months can be donated out here. And the payroll details can be entered here. But basically onto the mandatory columns, its business unit is the mandatory column. Okay. Next is if you information. Once all his information is entered, like right from identification, personal information, employment information, roles. Basically roles, one of the important and the vital part for hiring an employee is role. This says in which page he can, like if an HR, if a company has an HR, only the HR person can hire an employee. So each and every individual has some role. An employee associated with the organization can be set up with a role. And mainly this fusion HCM is mainly based out of roles. Each and every employee has kind of roles. There are four roles, namely job role, duty role, data role, and abstract role, which can be discussed in the later sessions. Hiring an employee. In this page, you can view all the information entered, like what is, uh, what is his name, action is hired, action reason is hired to fill the vacant position, hire date, worker type, legal employer, and his person number. Person number in the, should be automatically generated. And the basic information and its personal details and business unit, which we have seen in the previous screenshots. Okay, then if we press save and submit, the request will be submitted and the details will be processed and we can see him under the workforce management whose navigation as as follows. Like now we have hired a person and we can see him, see the person in this tab, navigator, click on navigator, my workforce person management. Like query the following person by the name followed by the percentage symbol. Okay, if say we have created an employee as Smith, Steve Smith, we can give it as Smith percentage. Here you can see his name. Now he's, pop, he's populated and this is his person name and what kind of user type, whether it's an employee, contractor or a non-worker. 
what is his job role what is his assignments these are the steps to hire and person and like on to the next scenario how can you terminate an employee from an from the organization or the enterprise okay now we will get on to how to terminate an employee step one is go to navigator and this button this three lines are the navigator my workforce person and employment query the person by its name as i told you earlier as we can see it here too like and go to actions personal and an employment and manage work relationship which is highlighted below like manage work relationship person and employment and some of the functions under this action tab is role based so the best practice is used to use the task function which is mentioned below okay let's go on navigator same navigation my work was person and employment query the person by its number and click on this hyperlink like its name and you will be directed to manage employment screen like and this button is the task button where we can see the list of functions available there for terminating an employee basically terminating an employee is to to cancel the work relationship created for the employee related to the legal entity or the enterprise in this scenario we need to cancel his work relationship so go on to the manage work relationship mm. here we can see the action as resignation like there will be a kind of list of values provided and all those kinds of list of values are one time setup which can be discussed later okay person and employment manage work and relationship we can choose the appropriate actions for the termination from the list of values available Mm. and the notification date and the termination date in which date is going to be terminated say for like in any company there will be kind of a notification date like if a person is going to retire in so and so date he will be having a notice period of one month or two months and that can be entered in the notification date and the exact termination date can be entered here and the other main object here it's like whether he's going to be terminated immediately or sign come kind of a notice period okay those process options are defined here deferred immediate is kind of immediate terminating him immediately on the same day deferred it's kind of like future terminations if a person serves a notice period and he'll be terminated in the future but the system even accepts the future terminations in those cases he'll be active till so and so date while processing to the release notice periods and later on to the specific date he'll be terminated then now you can click on the s yes button person and the most important scenario in termination is the person becomes inactive only on the next day in according to the termination date like say if say if a person is hired on june 10th 2016 and its termination date is today like if you enter it today the system accepts it and for the for processing it the system takes one day in accordance to the termination date so from the next day you can see his status as inactive basically for terminating you need to create a manager login manager login it's nothing but create an employee assign him the role of a line manager and you can log in through his instance and terminate an employee okay the person status should be inactive as shown below now we can see the smith whose assignment status is inactive and payroll ineligible like mm, you can see the difference while hiring a person and when we terminating a person which i'll show you now Mm, here we can see Steve Smith, whose assignment status is active and payroll eligible. 
and after the termination process we can see his status as inactive and payroll ineligible. So, so. Here we can see he is an inactive, so he is no more related to the company. And like the next step is rehiring an employee. For rehiring an employee, the same steps as followed in the previous steps: navigator, my workforce, person and employment, and query the person by its name or any person number. Like in case it's a one-time setup, we can even create the person number in accordance to our wish but it's basically a one time setup which cannot be entered in a letter and there is an option even to enter the person number manually but not while hiring the person through the instance it's by loading an employee through HTL which would be discussed later okay like enter the person name followed by the percentage symbol and Either you can go by action tab, person and employment and create a work relationship. For rehiring an employee, in while terminating an employee, his work relationship will be cancelled. So in order to rehire an employee, we do need to create a work relationship in response to his enterprise. So either you can use this action tab or the task button, which I have showed you in the previous screenshot. And or even you can see below like we can click on the cipher link on his name and this is the task button and here you should click on the create work relationship create work relationship and enter the mandatory fields as we discussed below what is his rehire date what is his action we are going to rehire an employee what is the action reason rehire to fill of the vacant position. What is his legal employer? Like as we discussed what is a legal employer, this is a mandatory. All these kinds of stars like are the mandatory fields and which cannot be skipped. Oracle Corporation. In cases of rehiring, the person may or may not be hired in the same legal employer which is based on the client requirements. And we should enter the personal details such as name, mm, date of birth which I'm not able to show you in the screenshot but which will be definitely shown during the other courses and step we should enter the mandatory fields as highlighted below the business unit the assignment status and manager details see for any kind of rehire scenarios as I mentioned earlier may or may not be assigned to the same business unit based on the client requirement Okay, steps in the step six is save and submit. Like we do need to save, save the details as we had entered in the instance and submit for rehiring an employee. And like we can see him query the person in person management where I have shown the navigation in the other scenarios. Okay, type his name followed by the percentage symbol where you can see two work relationships created for a rehire scenario. See, the first work relationship, Steve Smith is an employee whose job is principal consultant, but he has been terminated. And the second scenario is Steve Smith, who has been hired for another job, which I have not entered in this, because job is not a mandatory field. Only the mandatory field can be recognized to the star, which I have shown in the screenshots. Like this assignment status is active. So in this case for a RNA an employee we can like see distinguish and current a person basically a person has more work relationship while in working to an entity so which can be distinguished through the higher date. So I mentioned that the higher date is one of the most vital factor and hiring an employee and even in rehire scenarios. Okay, let's discuss what is a global transfer. Okay, if say a company has an legal entity 
in India and in US. So if a person is going got is going to work for US, first he was hired in India, then later on he is going to work in US on the on-site location. So basically, how to do the global transfer process? Okay, go to Navigator, My Workforce, Person and Employment. Query the person by name or the person number. Click on the hyperlink. Hmm. It basically we can global transfer and current employee employee whose work relationship which is active, not the inactive one. As discussed above, we can navigate to the hyperlink provided or by using the task function. Okay, person and employment, manage employment. Back. You we do and have an option called as edit and update. Like in case of the difference between update and correct is like basically mm, we have an option to update is like when you are updating an field like which can be viewed in the later days. Like okay, in specific date I have changed this legal employer or the specific date I have changed this uh, business unit or his or the person type which can be noted using the update option and by using this view history when we click on the view history we can basically view what all changes has been made right from the time of hiring a new person and the basic difference between update and correct is correct is like while you are making any mistake like if you are entering the business unit as vision financials but instead of entering vision financials you have entered the wrong one in those cases we can use correct options basically update option is recorded correct option is not recorded okay again enter all the mandatory fields effective start dates which might be shown here and the action the global transfer and the designation global transfer is like you are going to change the legal employer from India to US. So first he has been working in Oxford Co. Now he has been transferred to the Moon Corporation legal unit. Mm. And you can use the copying primary assignments because all kind of job kind of job addresses will be the same or may or may not be changed because legal employer in the sense even there can be a change in legal employer within the same country or the divisions. In those cases, based on the client requirement, we can go for copy the primary assignment and click on OK. It's not mandatory to choose this option. It's it's primarily a client requirement. Okay, next one is to make changes to the mandatory columns. As I said, the business unit, the job, the national identifier. The same steps as repeated in hiring a person is manager details. Then you can view a general view of the employment information, the roles, the roles in the sense like whether he is a manager or an uh, vice president. So so okay. Then you can save and submit the process. Basically, why did I skip the roles tab? It's in roles tab, we can view the roles assigned to an employee, but it does not contain any mandatory information. Okay, now you can query the same person in the person management screen by clicking on navigator, my workforce, person and employment, and query the person by its name followed by the percentage symbol. And after the global transfer process, now you can see, because while doing a global transfer, first and the employee work relationship will be terminated and new work relationship will be created in the other legal employer. So we can see a two inactive status because a person was hired and he was terminated. Which is this, this line shows that and second one he was rehired and this status shows that, shows that inactive. Now he has been global transfer in which the new work relationship is stated here. See, first he was working in Oracle Crop and now he is working in Moon Corporation, which is shown accordingly. 
and that's it hello arvin